Hello, everyone, and welcome. My name is Rob Bertram, Chief Scientist in USAID's Bureau for Food Security, and I'd like to take a few minutes to talk with you about why the challenge of food security is such a critical priority for our country and ultimately for the world. Agriculture has been one of the most impactful areas of development, along with sectors like health and education. And if you think about it, the population of the Earth has more than doubled just since the Green Revolution began in the 1960s. So we've done a lot of things right in terms of feeding a growing population, but we still have almost 900 million people who are chronically food insecure, and we, we still have 3 million children or more a year who are dying from causes ultimately linked to undernutrition. So I think what we've managed to achieve through the recent years in Feed the Future, where we've really shown the impacts on child stunting, on extreme poverty, and then to have th that record of achievement translate into the Global Food Security Act, which was passed by huge numbers of the Congress and became law, is, is an incredibly exciting uh, opportunity that puts new wind in our sails to, to, to do even better going forward. And Vice President Pence recently spoke about how food security remains one of the critical uh, priorities for the United States government in terms of global development. And I'd add something else here as a chief scientist, and that is no other country in the world is better positioned to help achieve these goals than the United States. We have a huge diversity in both our public and private sectors, in our civil society, our NGO partners, all of which bring incredible skills to bear on solving this age-old complex problem, but one that we can actually see the light at the end of the tunnel on. So it's, it's an incredibly exciting time, and our challenge now is to, to make this second phase of Feed the Future even more impactful, more relevant, and more life-changing for millions and millions of people across the developing world. Now, the Global Food Security Act emphasizes three main objectives. Income growth, as measured through reductions in extreme poverty. Nutrition gains, as mentioned, measured through reductions in child stunting and something new, resilience. The idea that a resilient society is able to cope with shocks and be prepared for the next one and not fall back into a crisis situation. And when you think about it, that framing in the Global Food Security Act matches our traditional understanding of food security, which talks about availability, linked to supply and productivity, Access, linked to demand and the incomes with, to buy food. Nutrition, linked to utilization of food. And very importantly also, stability. The idea that this needs to be there day in, day out, which I think ties very nicely to the resilience theme. The Bureau for Global Food Security stands ready to, to work with all of us in terms of drawing on that base and making our work going forward even more impactful, more strategic, and more effective than in the past. Congress and the American people are putting their faith in us to do the best job we can to achieve these goals if using our uh, resources, our limited resources, as efficiently and strategically as possible. Under the Global Food Security Act, agricultural-led growth is seen as the engine that ultimately is driving food security gains. Why is this? It's because agricultural growth is more than twice as effective as other kinds of growth in reducing extreme poverty. Agricultural growth is also extremely effective at increasing the consumption of food among uh, the, the poor and food insecure because it makes food both more available and more affordable. Now, the food quality, not just quantity, matters. And that brings us to uh, the second big uh, message uh, coming out of the Global Food Security Act, in my opinion, and that is the, the emphasis on nutrition. Uh, nutrition has always been in our concept of food security, and in fact, it was one of the great gains under Feed the Future to bring agriculture and nutrition together. But under the Global Food Security Act, we have an even greater emphasis on trying to understand how our work intersects with the other critical 
contributors to nutrition outcomes, clean water and sanitation, health and nutrition services, and importantly, the status of women. And ultimately, at the end of the day, we measure our work by the uh, reductions that we can achieve in child stunting. And we are making progress under Feed the Future, but the challenge I think now is to do better in this next phase. An important part of these gains that I just talked about in nutrition are, relates to our work more broadly, and that is the whole issue of gender. We've learned through Feed the Future that women are the key decision makers in many aspects of agriculture and food systems across the developing world. So we need to have solid analysis underpinning our work, looking at women as producers, as traders, as processors, as marketers, as scientists, as extension agents. Uh, also, very importantly, we know that outcomes within the household and community are very related to the ability of women to steward resources and to make decisions, and that their decisions are the ones most likely to lead to the nutrition outcomes in children that we seek. A lot of this comes down to being able to reduce risk. So we can think a lot about that in terms of things like drought tolerant crops, maybe irrigation, uh, financial tools like index insurance, and other things that, that holistically reduce risk and take into account a variety of strategies on farm and off that people use. It also presents us some challenges because sometimes working in these areas is more difficult than working in some of the other areas where humanitarian crises are less common. But it is an important one and I think has really direct connections back to national security strategy writ large. Uh, so often we hear people talk about food security as being very related to broader national security for the United States. Resilience in a nutshell is the idea that we can invest in ways that prevent a shock from becoming a crisis and enable families to have greater ability to cope with perhaps a drought or some other a shock of some kind that affects their livelihoods. And resilience uh, is challenging also in as much as it takes us towards areas that have experienced recurrent humanitarian crises. We know though that by strategically investing in resilience, we can actually reduce the price tag going forward in terms of the funds that would have been needed to come in and provide humanitarian relief. When we think about resilience, we think holistically. We think about livelihoods, not just on farm, but what are, peop what are the various coping strategies people use, employment and other thing things. And I think that takes us to another point that I'd like to make with you that I think cuts across all our work uh, in uh, Feed the Future, and that is this idea of systems. So where we used to talk just about value chains, we're now talking about production systems and market systems that incorporate multiple value chains that link with each other. And we think that by working this way, we can, with greater relevance, respond to the kinds of decisions that both producers and marketers and processors make, uh, but also ultimately get to a system that because of its diversity, because of its inclusiveness of these various uh, interacting pieces, is more, is more uh, resilient in the longer term and more productive. Across these systems, both production systems and marketing systems, its opportunity, driven by the potential for profit from investment, combined with a, a knowledge of and an ability to manage downside risks that it take us to the direction we want to go, where we're going to incentivize players from farmers on their farms all the way through the production, uh, the, the trading, the processing, the value addition, throughout that chain to invest. And Ambassador Green has, has called out for us the importance of seeking alignment between the kinds of investments we make and those that the private sector will be motivated to make, really taking us towards long-term success and sustainability. There's another factor besides upside potential and downside risk that affects investment. That's policy. The policy context matters. Even the best technology will be constrained in a poor policy environment. So though we focus on zones of influence and though we look at production and market systems that link together, 
we need to think about national level and sometimes regional level policy contexts, which provide hopefully the transparency and the predictability to motivate potential investors on farm and off and to open up opportunities in trade, for example, especially regional trade, but also global trade. We think we've learned in Feed the Future that being able to really measure and validate our achievements and those of our partners has paid off not only in delivering the development outcomes, but in in convincing our partners in the Congress, uh, the American people, all kinds of civil society organizations that our work is really making a difference and that we are on the path to end hunger and undernutrition and achieve true food security. So throughout our work, let's keep that in mind. Let's draw on the, the expertise that's been assembled across uh, the Bureau for Food Security and elsewhere about how to do our work best, whether it be in gender, nutrition, uh, or, or, or resilience, but then also how to document, measure, and, and quantify those impacts. We need to recognize that agriculture is probably the largest single way in which the human species interacts with the natural world. So if we're serious about things like biodiversity and conserving tropical forests, if we're serious about having water for both urban use and rural needs and environmental needs. If we're serious about climate, uh, a whole range of challenges, all of these things depend on what happens in agriculture. What kind of world are we looking for? Hopefully one that has transformed systems where people are poor and struggling and hungry now to one where they have a sustainable livelihood through wise stewardship of resources, through sustainable intensification of agriculture that takes into account technologies, the best information on markets and weather, uh, but also the, the natural resource endowment, the human capital that exists, the market and policy options, all of these things coming together to drive this transformation that will achieve our food security goals. And if we do that right, we'll not only achieve our food security goals, we will make important, if not critical, contributions to other global objectives. So sustainable intensification of agriculture that drives these food security outcomes can also be part of an overall global strategy. And we think about the Sustainable Development Goals, the Millennium Development Goals, all of these things show how central our work is, but also how relevant it is to the larger effort that we're involved in.